What's up guys? This is the new Netgear Nighthawk RS200. It's a Wi-Fi 7 router on the budget end. So I'm gonna unbox and review this thing. It's a dual band system and it has ports of up to 2.5 gigabit. We get a quick start guide in two languages with some info on the back as well. It includes a 30 day trial of Netgear Armor, which is optional, but offers additional protection. Some contact info. Charger is 100 to 240 volts with an output of 30 watts. It also includes an ethernet cable, doesn't specify category. We got some LED indicators. We got a sync WPS button, LED on and off right there. We got a factory reset right here. We got the power on and off. We got some ports right here. So we have a 2.5 gigabit right here. We have three gigabit ports here, USB 3.0, and we have a 2.5 gigabit here, uh, dedicated for the internet. So your internet source would go in here, and so if you have internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, you could go in at 2.5 and then you could come out at 2.5, which is fantastic. And then we got the power right here. It looks like it can be mounted if you get the correct accessory for it. And we have a little sticker on the top that I'm hiding on purpose that basically shows how you could just connect to it by scanning the QR code. And we got some vents on the top as well. So I had a chance to play with this thing. I did all the speed test range tests. I have all those numbers here. We'll go over them momentarily. I tested with the following Wi-Fi devices. I also tested with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. However, even though this is a Wi-Fi 7 device, it can't go quite as fast as these two. So just as a heads up, it has nothing to do with the router. It's just that I guess it must be from the iPhone because I've tested this with a whole bunch of routers and that just seems to be the case. In fact, I made a separate video comparing these two phones to each other while I'm running the Netgear Orbi 970, which is a base of a mesh system. And the OnePlus 13 was a clear winner there. I'll put video links for that in case you guys are interested. I'll also put product links in the description box below in case you guys are interested in this, because this router actually performed better than what I was anticipating. Uh, anticipating. <laughs> um, so there was one issue that I noticed during my testing was that it, for some reason, I don't know if it was a one-off thing or whatever, but for some reason it wouldn't, it didn't like my, it, cause typically I use my same Wi-Fi name and password or SSID and password as my existing routers. So all my stuff can automatically connect to it. Uh, but for some reason when I would do that, some of my devices would connect and some of them would not. And so I tried to look for settings. I tried to play around with it a little bit, but I couldn't quite find something that would allow everything to connect. So I just changed the Wi-Fi name, and then when I changed the Wi-Fi name, whatever I tried to connect to it, it connected right away. Uh, then I was like, oh, is there something wrong with my password? Maybe it doesn't like my password or something. Uh, and then I used the same password, but with a different SSID, it connected. Then I'm like, okay, is it my SSID? So then I used the same SSID with a different password, and whatever I tried to connect, connected to it. But for some reason, it didn't like me using my existing SSID and my existing password. Um, so that was really the only issue that I ran into. So I just basically used a different one and got all the testing done. So yeah, anyways, maybe I'm, uh, unless that's a one-off thing with me, cause I'm, I go through a lot of routers and I'm, and I constantly use the same SSID and password. And I don't know if there's something in there cause I have used other Netgear Nighthawks in the past. So I'm not sure what the reasoning was, but Hopefully that's a one-off thing. If not, hopefully there's a firmware update to address that. Um, but if you pick a new Wi-Fi name and password or like no issues whatsoever, and I ran that, no drop, something like that, everything was sm smooth sailing basically. All right, so with all that said, let's get, jump into the internet speed test now. As you guys know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, no matter how fast the router itself can go. However, if the router can't go as fast as your internet speeds, then you will be capped to your router speeds. So for me, my internet speeds are five gigabits per second upload and download, and this router, the fastest port it supports is 2.5 gigabits. So when my internet source comes in, it gets capped to 2.5 gigabits. So when I do an ethernet speed test on the computer, that's the speeds that I get. I get like 2.4 something basically up and down. Um, so it does get to just about the max speeds of the 2.5, whatever the 2.5 can handle. Now the Wi-Fi devices are a different story. 
when I did a speed test with that, I actually got, I still got very fast speed. I got 2.14. Uh, download and 1.833 upload on an internet speed test, which is really, really fast. Now, to find the true performance though of this router, I need to do a local speed test server. So what I do is I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer and this isolates the router because I'm no longer relying on my internet service provider nor the public speed test server, which can be busy at times. It depends which time you're running the test, which server you're connecting to. So. Looking at these speeds, there is an improvement in speeds overall. So we got a faster uh, download speed, 2.27, so almost 2.3 down, which is very, very fast. I mean, we're getting very close to Wi-Fi, uh, to Ethernet territory on that one. And we got just about two up, which is also really, really fast. All right, so next we get into range test. Now range will vary drastically by location. If you have, essentially the more obstructions you have, typically the less range you're gonna get. So if you're in between walls, if you have concrete walls, if you're in between floors, all of this stuff can negatively impact your range. So in my case, at 20 feet away inside my place, I got 2.16 down and 1.86 up, both very fast. The upload was more of a drop than the download, but still getting some crazy fast numbers. At 50 feet, this is when I'm outside, and this is when I was like, how is this router going this fast? So. It was, uh, I got 1.87 down and 1.59 up. So very, very fast. And at 100 feet, this is when I'm across the street and I almost got gigabit speeds download. I got 948 down and I got 430 up. Obviously the upload is taking more of a hit, um, but it's very, very fast. It was just, I was, I was not expecting it to be as good as it was in terms of the range test. So it was very, very uh, good overall. Now for setup and configuration, use the Nighthawk app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. And it's a very simplified app. It gives you, in fact, it's very limiting because it gives you just the main things that most people would want. Basically how to set it up, uh, make your Wi-Fi name and password, make a guest Wi-Fi if you wanted to. Um, you know, you could do an internet speed test on there if you wanted to. I like to usually do it on the computer uh, or on the phones, basically. And then um, parental controls, it does come with super basic parental controls, basically pause and unpause the device. If you want more advanced parental controls, that does require a separate subscription. Uh, and then obviously, if you want those additional protections with Netgear Armor, it does come with that free 30 day trial as of now. Um, but if you want to continue that, that also, again, separate subscription for that. So just keep that in mind. You can also check for firmware updates and stuff within the Nighthawk app. Again, it's very, very simplified. Now, if you want to tinker with this thing, you can actually go to the browser and go to its web interface and there's a lot more options in there. So you just need a computer that's hooked up to this via ethernet, then you can access it. So you just go to 192.168.1.1. It'll ask you for the username and password. I uh, just put in the default stuff, which I believe is admin and password is the password uh, when you're first setting it up, I believe. Uh, and then you can really tinker with it. Again, you can hold, set the whole thing up. You don't have to get the Nighthawk app if you don't want to. You can set it up in there. You can configure it in there. Um, there's way more options. You can separate out the bands if you want to. You can have a separate 2.4 and a separate five gigahertz if you want to. You can make a separate guest network if you want to. You could set up a VPN. You can even schedule the Wi-Fi uh, within the browser interface to say, oh, I want the Wi-Fi to be on during these times. Or uh, basically, let's say for instance, you don't have too many Wi-Fi devices and you just want the Wi-Fi to be off when you're sleeping. Well, you could set a schedule in there. So there's a lot more options in there. You could control the lighting in there if you want to. You could store those configs. You could play around with it. Then you can bring those configurations back. You can also set up the USB and a share hard drive on your network as well. If you did set it up with the Nighthawk app, that doesn't actually matter. You could still access the browser interface and still configure stuff. And if you set it up with the browser interface, that also doesn't matter. You could get the Nighthawk app and control it that way as well. Now, is this router right for you? Well, as always, it depends on your specific situation. I would say if you have internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, this is a solid router because of its performance. It has very fast speeds and very good range and you have two 2.5 gigabit speeds 
uh, ports. So your internet could come in at up to 2.5 and go out at up to 2.5. If you want to get a 2.5 gigabit switch, then you could, you know, go expand your ports to more 2.5 gigabit devices. Otherwise, you could use the gigabit ports here as well. So overall, it's a solid performing router. Now, I will also mention I am going to be reviewing its bigger brothers all the way up to the RS700, and then I will make a full-on comparison between all five models, and I'll give you guys my opinion as well over there. So if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video. If you guys have any additional comments or questions, please leave in the comment sections below. As always, I will try my best to read them and answer them. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.